Yeah, you're good. Beauty. Hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna try and film an episode of Being a Lineman. We didn't really have a busy day. However, my I'm off to an early start here, about an hour early before shift to go to our switchyard for the transmission department. That beeping you hear is my air brakes. Not quite enough air in the tanks yet to release my brakes. So these episodes being Lyman, they're they're a lot less edited, a lot less rehearsed. Pretty much try to capture normal day-to-day -day life as a Lyman. So this morning I've got two appointments with electricians. One at nine, one at nine thirty. Most days I have one of these on Monday to Friday. Basically, I go to commercial or residential uh, building to meet an electrician. I have to disconnect the wires or the meter or transformer or whatever, so that they can do some work under a provincial permit that has nothing to do with us, but they need power disconnected in order to perform their work. So I've got a couple of those scheduled. However, I do have some unplanned switching for a transmission department that they just called me about. So, normally I start off my mornings grabbing a coffee. We're gonna skip that this morning. We're gonna head straight to do our switching. We're a little crunch for time this morning. We'll try and stop and grab one after. But we're gonna pause the video and head off to the switch yard. I'm not quite sure what's involved there yet. Hopefully it's not too big of a job. guys so we are at the switch yard here now sometimes in my videos you'll hear me refer to these locations as switch yards and sometimes you'll hear me refer to them as a substation so the difference is a switch yard which we call our company terminal is it's all transmission lines there's no distribution lines coming out of it if you coming in to, to feed some station services but the purpose of a transmission yard uh, or a terminal or a switch yard is it's, it's basically a tie station for all the substations. It's like the highway of power lines. The substation is where a highway comes into a transformer and distributes out into the city. So if we considered all the substations cities, the transmission yard would be the highways and then the distribution lines would be all the side streets and stuff, if that makes sense at all. So, we're at, the, we're at the terminal here right now. I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm gonna call my power system operator. The power system operator looks after the terminals and the dispatch looks after the substations. I don't have communication with the power system operator on the radio, so I'll be calling him on the phone. And you guys, you guys are gonna laugh at this, actually. Um, so, working in a truck all day, we, we do have a lot of paperwork and I often find myself twisted this way towards my computer. My phone's sitting on my computer right now. And it's hard on the lower back when you're always twisted. So I've got this TV tray or whatever food tray. It doesn't fit my huge jingle on the truck. So I've got these Milwaukee hooks on it. And it sits on my steering wheel perfectly. I tip that steering wheel up and I've got something to write on. It doesn't even honk my horn. If the switching plan is overly complicated, I will get the power system operator to email me a copy of it. And then we have to have the switching plan written out on paper so that we can check off our steps as we go. I can't show you guys this sheet because it is copyrighted material from our company, but basically as I get my instructions, I'm gonna write down the switch number and then check off the operation for that step. It could be check open, could be close, check close, um, pre-wall the steps involved locking, uh, could be tagging involved, racking in, racking out, removing hold-offs, uh, the automatic reclosing. There's, there's all kinds of steps in here. And our sheet, it's basically a spreadsheet. It's got all the steps listed across. You start off with your device number and any razzle, rattles off the steps. Some people put check marks. Check open or open, check open, lock. And then as you perform those steps, there's also a box where you check off instructions received, action performed, and verify your action. 
so it's a, it's a pretty good process. Most companies have something similar to that. So let's call the dispatch and uh, or the power system operator and see what we've got here on the go today. Sounds good. Is there quite a few steps or? Okay, no, it sounds good. If there was more, I'd get you to email me a copy, but that's all good. All right, so it sounds like a bit of an abnormal situation. It doesn't really have anything to do with me or my area. However, where these terminals are all tied together, a, lo a lot of work at one location can be affected by protection points at another. You said there wasn't a whole lot of steps for me here. So basically he documented me as me being on site. The, the other guys are still getting set up and he's gonna give me a call back with, with my steps. Uh, I'm all. I'm just sitting in my truck here, so I'm all clear of that breaker. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, so what they're going to be doing is opening a uh, breaker. SA twenty one forty five. So our our power system operator is aware if if anyone's inside one of these switch yards for the main reason that in order to come into these switch yards we have to call in. We're not allowed to be inside these yards without our power system operator being aware, unlike the old days. Also, these things are wired up the cameras like crazy. So, uh, the reason he was calling there is he's going to be operating that breaker. It's it's not something that's dangerous. There, there's uh, different types of breakers. Uh, this one's an air breaker. When it opens, the arc snuffed out internally you're not gonna see any sparks or anything. On on the very small chance that that breaker were to fail, it's, it's over 200,000 volts going into that thing. It, you wouldn't wanna be anywhere near it. So whenever they operate these breakers, we have to be clear of the switch yard, which is over there, I'm inside my truck. So he was just checking to make sure I wasn't out roping around the switch yard for whatever reasons, doing inspections or something. So his, his step he's gonna do remotely is to operate that breaker. And then my step is simply to check it open. Once once the breaker internally snuffs out the arc, there's gonna be a flag that identifies on site whether that breaker is in fact open or not. Actually, just gonna roll ahead here a little bit. See which breaker is gonna be operated here. Pretty sure that's the breaker that's gonna be operated right there. That's our 230 kV line coming into the terminal, goes through that power transformer there, steps that down to 138 kV. We might hear a slight pop as that operates. Shut the truck off so we can hear a little bit while we're waiting to see if that operates. As that line comes in, those three pillars right in the center of the screen here now, those are all PTs, potential transformers. They're tapping off the 230 kV line, stepping that down to 120 volts. The PT, it's not a regular transformer that you can use to step voltage down for usable power, other than one very unique situation that I covered in a video like two years ago, if you guys wanna check that out, where we use a PT to feed a single cottage on an island out in the ocean as the high line goes across. Pretty neat setup. But basically, those PTs can only handle so much, so much load. So they're just used to step down the voltage to 120 for metering equipment, for lack of better words. And this is, uh, I covered this in a video too, that power transformer, 230 kV down to 138. And there's some side bushings on it that actually also transform down to, hit the wrong button. You can see that little structure with the steel cable guard on it. That's 12,470 volts. It's basically like a station service. It steps that down to a distribution level and then we have a pad mount sitting on the ground in front of it there. So that there's actually three voltages coming out of that transformer. This guy right here beside me, that's a 345 kV transformer. 345,000 volts, stepping that down to 138 kV. I haven't heard anything operate yet. Uh, we are 8.30 a.m. My first appointment's at 9 a.m. 
Actually, while sitting here, I just noticed we're missing a bell on that 138 kV line up there. You can see right here, there's a bell missing. Those are tempered glass bells. They don't crack like the old porcelain ones. When they when they fail, they simply shatter and do a million pieces. This is the one bell. It's not a not a big deal, but that'll have to be reported. These are the older style here. These are the porcelain guys. I don't like these ones as much because one of those bells could be cracked and you wouldn't know about it until you got a real good visual or a thermo or even rung the bells, which I did show in a video. If you tap a bell that's cracked, it's got a dead sound to it. It won't ring. And then these guys right here are the epoxylators, the synthetic, it's kind of like a, a rubber coated epoxy dead end. And then that second one just below, that's that's a lightning arrestor. That's a direct path to ground for the 138 kV. However, it's an extremely high resistance, so it doesn't obviously it's not a short a short path to ground. However, it is it is connected to ground through some high some resistors, or if the voltage exceeds the reading of those resistors, it'll bleed it out, hence a lightning strike. So Sometimes in our trade, there can be a lot of a lot of waiting around, especially when it comes to the transmission department. It's not like I've got a guy in the distribution side going a mile down the road to open a switch, and I'm waiting for him to open before I can install my grounds. This uh, there could be two or three terminals involved with the switching, and I, I suspect whoever's doing the switching on the other end was also at home in bed when they got the call or just starting out their shift. So. As I said, hopefully they're not too long for the sake of the, the electrician that I've got to meet here in 28 minutes. It's almost nine o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be really late for my first appointment now. Not not much we can do about that. I, I feel bad for an electrician, a small business trying to get his work done. So I did call um, the crew that was doing the reconnect. So what I would have done if I had gone there, this one's residential. There would have been probably a number two triplex feeding the house. I'd go up, I'd cut the tripod was clear, maybe even completely remove that span of wire, and the electrician would be doing an upgrade, upgrading the home's entrance from 100 amp to 200 amp, which requires one aught triplex to feed it. So normally what I do is I disconnect that, electrician does his work, might take him four or five hours, and then towards the end of the day, the crew goes back to do the reconnect, but they actually string in a new run of one aught triplex. The crew, they got two or three guys, a little bit more efficient than me trying to do that by myself. So the crew's gonna be in the area, in my area this morning anyways. I just talked to the crew and he's gonna head over and actually look after the disconnect for me. And my second appointment at 9.30, I told him I'd call him back. If I get the switching instructions here in the next 20 minutes or so, then I'll still head to that other disconnect so he can go about his, his other work that's scheduled. But if not, he'll, he'll grab both those disconnects. So that helps out. Quite a bit because so I could be sitting here a while so we'll let you guys know how we make out it's almost nine o'clock here now 10 for uh, terminal you said you'd like SA 2145 checked open keep track of my times and report back I never heard the breaker open my truck's running but usually you hear a little pop at the very least so let's take a walk over and check open that breaker oh man jeez should have my winter coat on Morning. Always a beauty when you can walk on top of the snow. Now I'm assuming this is the breaker. Being that the device number identifies it as being off the 230 line. But we will confirm that. Lines are awful noisy this morning. SA twenty one forty five, and we are open. That number you see, that 258, that's just uh, a counter. Keeps track of the 
amount of times the device is operated. So SA2145 is open. We'll head back to the truck where it's warm. Switch uh, or breaker SA2145 was checked open. All right, so he just asked if I could stick around for a few minutes here while they do some more switching. We're all good here now. It's 9.30. I was just talking to the crew again and they went and did both my disconnects with the electricians in town. So we're all good there, uh, which is good because it's 9.36 a.m. right now, so I would have been quite late. Uh, a trouble call did show up though. Check the comments here. Single customer outage and there's no comments. It just says no power. So normally, any any time a trouble call comes in, my computer starts sending an alert, an audible alert, and it also flashes on the screen. If I'm driving, even if the lid's closed on the computer, I'll, I'll hear the bell going off. Where we do emergency calls, if you hear that bell going off, you don't get to slam on your brakes and whip over on the side of the road and start checking into things. If it's an emergency, the dispatch will call me on the radio or call my phone if there's a vehicle accident or a house fire or something. So you don't want to let it sit there all day if you're driving an hour out of town. Wait till you find a, a safe spot to pull over. Check it. So this one here, no emergency, just, just says no power. We're going to put ourselves en route there. It's a solid hour's drive. We're at 9.30 already. So you can see Monday morning, typical day, I've got nothing crazy. I've got 12 work orders in my truck right now. But I haven't actually done any scheduled work as of yet. In fact, I've pawned off my scheduled work on another crew so far. But this this one more call that came in, that's probably going to pretty well take me till noon. The day's going to be half over. So, pretty slow day, but even on slow days, there's always something to do. We're always busy. First thing I'm going to do now is go grab that coffee. I'm going to show you guys my screen for a second. It's, it's hard because there's a lot of information I can't share on this screen, but we'll try and zoom right in. And there, that's okay, just like that. So, those are all my work orders. Um, the switching call at the terminal here that I'm arrived on now is the one that says arrived, highlighted in blue. The ROUT, that stands for routine. The Fs indicate that those aren't planned work. Those are those are trouble calls. All the rest of the calls are scheduled work. That one above it that says accepted, and then you can see where it says number of customers. That's number of customers affected, so it's only one. If there was a thousand, you'd see a thousand, obviously. That's where we're gonna be heading to next. It also documents, you can see it on the right side of the screen, status time. So I arrived at this call at 7.56 a.m. That other trouble call came through at 8.56 a.m. It's now 9.44. So we're going to complete this call. I've got to go back in. I'm going to change that status from arrived to reporting. And as soon as I click reporting, it brings up a new window. That's just looking for some comments as to what I did. So I'm just going to, but I did some switching for our power system operator. If the customer does call back in, they can, with an ETA, I'm wondering when we're going to get there, they can say that that guy is on route now after we grab our coffee on the way. Like I said, it's about an hour drive, so good time to grab coffee for the drive. Also, I think I mentioned this like three years ago, I still got and this isn't sponsored at all guys, but highly recommend it, especially if you're a contractor driving a different truck every day, you might jump into an old truck. I grabbed this little Bose speaker, I think it's called a Micro. It was like 130 bucks, I got it on a boxing day sale for like 70 bucks or something. I just download podcasts on my phone on the weekend, get hours worth of podcasts. That clips right up onto my dash right beside the regular truck speakers. But instead of just listening to mindless radio with the repeated same songs over and over again, I'll, I'll play one of my podcasts for the, for the drive out of town. Keeps things a little bit more interesting through the day, educational, all that stuff. But yeah, highly recommend picking one of those up or something like it for the truck. But yeah, we're gonna uh, we're gonna head to town. It's it's, it's going to be after 10:30 by the time we get there. We'll uh, we'll see if this outage is anything exciting. Nice day like this. 
probably not much. Roof, roof you can close and cut out, I suspect. All right, so it's 10.43 a.m. We just rolled up to our no power call here. And at first glance, everything looks normal. First thing I check, it's, it's not a sideline. Uh, just a transformer, kind of an old one. First thing we're checking is for that cutout to be open, which it's not, it's fairly cold out, so there is a chance it could be frozen shot, but there's no snow or ice up in the air, so I, I doubt that. And I can't see a fuse tail hanging down the bottom of that door so everything looks good um, I'm not sure why they call them as one customer usually it automatically group up where you can see this triplex going across the road above me two customers everyone's home there in the driveway I think I'll walk up in there pretty narrow driveway I'll be rubbing my boom off the trees a little bit Gonna pull my truck off the road a little bit more here. We'll uh, take a walk in. So when you roll up to a call like this, I mean, there's still a very real possibility that they don't have power. Maybe they have partial power, and it came in as an outage because they're in their kitchen, lights didn't work, whatever. So I'll go knock on the door. If if any doubts at all, then then I'll take the meter off and start doing voltage checks at the meter. Like if, if I say to the customer, you know, power's on here, they say, well, we called because the lights are flickering. Obviously, we'll investigate further. But we'll take a walk up, take a look at that meter. If the lights are on, if the meter's lit up, then we'll simply knock on the door and see what's going on. So they got the generator out. Generator's Meters lit up. Probably the main breaker popped inside, I imagine. Go talk to the customer. Alright, so we're all good here. This is customer's breaker. They got a fairly new panel. Uh, breaker was popped. Might end up getting some more calls with that wing today. So we'll just run this through. There's no charge or from us or something like this. Once we do get the smart meters in place, it'll prevent quite a few of these calls. They'll be able to tell online if, if the customer has power going into their house or not. Same as what I first did when I arrived, just check the meter, meter had power. So we'll run this one through. Pretty, pretty quiet day, really. I've got a lot of street light work orders and stuff. I do have a meter. It's another... 45 minute to an hour. Well, it's an hour and a half drive out of town. We're halfway to town now. I'm halfway there. I've been wanting to check this for a week or two now. It says the meter reader reported. Oh, that's not it. This one right here. Meter reader reported that there's moisture in the meter. Can't see the reading. Appears to be quite a bit of condensation inside the globe. So we're gonna we're gonna check that out. Maybe there's meter water getting into the meter box. Could be nothing at all. The plastic on these meters sometimes gets pretty cloudy and stuff. Pretty pretty routine stuff for the rest of the day, unless unless we get any more trouble calls. But that's that's why I do these these being Lyman series videos, just to show you guys interested in getting into the trade what a regular day can be like for, for a troubleman that's not out doing new construction, building lines, or doing maintenance projects. You're busy all day, but a lot of times it's pretty pretty basic stuff. So we're going to hit the road. Another 45 minute drive. It's 10.53 a.m. now. This, this next call is going to chew up another good two hours by the time we get back into town. So we'll let you guys know how we make out. Just pulled over on 
the side of the road here. You hear that bell going off. That means there's a trouble call that came in. It's uh, 11.50. Yeah, pretty well just coming into the small village where I was going to check that meter. I don't see any trouble calls. Oh. Disconnect work order. So this must have been on a meter reader, meter changer truck. Disconnect for non-payment. So our our disconnect for non-payments go to our meter guys. Um, I always get them if there's any issues, any issues at all. If the customer is threatening or if there's a dog tied to the meter. Any access or any any compromised equipment, anything at all that's out of the ordinary. If there's a disconnect, it goes to my truck. I have some better resources for that sort of thing. So this one here says disconnect at pole, no access to meter. I think I know where this house is and the customers. Always the very best. It's it's unfortunate. Uh, I'll let you guys know when I head that way. It's not an emergency. I'm not going to head there right now. I'm going to carry on with today's plan. And where it's a disconnect for non-payment, there's no other issues. It's not a crazy amount of money. I'm I'm not going to rush over to do it if I don't get it done today. It's not a big deal. If we do get it done today, I won't be able to cover that one at all. I'm going to be able to cover. Any, any of what I do or the job site for a few different reasons. One is I don't want to show the customer's property or for some of the local guys that watch this channel, even anything that's recognizable for the area, that's that's not fair to the customer. As well as I don't want to show how we disconnect these situations, which, which can be a security issue. So I'll accept that to show them that I've received the work order. Five minutes to noon, I might even have a quick lunch break at the store up here, and then we'll go check out that meter with the condensation in it. Let's see there's a crew up by pull crew. Contractor set poles in the area. Alright, so we were just out of the truck. We'll grab a wrap from the little local restaurant here. And the computer's dinging again. Let's see if this is a trouble call. Uh, 45 customers out of power. So, man, that's on the other side of the map, too. And 45 customers is, it's big enough outage. I'm here now. I'm still going to take a look at that meter. I'm going to have to skip lunch a little bit here. Tree is split in half. Half landed on the wire. It broke the wire in half. I can't read this. It broke in half and the wire of the pole is down in front of my house. It doesn't say any fire trucks are there or anything. Well, I mean, at least we get a little bit of excitement today. It's... 12.15 now. We'll go take a look at that meter. Um, I'm going to fire a wrap. I'm going to eat that quick. And head to this other outage. Alright, so we're wrapping call now. There's two meters at the side here, but I mean, there's no, no moisture in that meter whatsoever nothing nothing seems out of the ordinary it's good there this is a seven jaw meter three phase We've got one of each of our phases and then a neutral there those are live those those top three lugs we've got those little red covers in case this steel lid slides down and hits one the way by so yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that at all. 
all the lugs are greased up. There's no corrosion or oxidization on any of the terminals at all. So that's one twenty two oh eight volt meter. If that was a three forty seven six hundred volt meter, we wouldn't uh, we wouldn't pull the meter off live. Anyways your tools all put away here and uh, we're gonna head to that outage. So we just rolled up on the no power call. Man, what a long drive. Uh, primary down, primary and neutral down. The line is still energized, not the down wires. The wire broke off right at the pole. So the wires are still strung up on the pole. Why don't we jump on the table? All right, so we've got some wires down here, primary neutral. That's not energized not grounded though either. You can see where this on top of the tree snapped off in the wind. The still hanging up the telephone wires in. This portion up here is still energized. The cutout was closed in. So that's that's not touching anything. That wire is still isolated. The tie wire holding that up there. And the neutral, the neutral's down for two span. Hard to see, but the neutral wire is down in the ditch there. And then our primary neutral is down here as well. So, first step, arriving at this call. If if that was an emergency, I could go open that cutout kind of, without talking to dispatch or anyone. But, uh, get the wires all squat in the air. So, we'll, we're still going to do that. First call, I'm going to make those to the foreman, see if there's any crews in the area. If we can get a hand here. And then I will talk to our dispatch. We'll get that line opened and get some grounds on that wire. Hey, how's it going? Good. Yeah, I need a hand here. Yeah, make sure you can work late. We'll uh, get two span of primary and neutral down. Okay, so got a crew on the way. Just a little side street, dead end road. So if, if he's got flaggers, we'll use them. It's always better to have them than not. If if he doesn't have flaggers, it's not a big deal. Um, next thing I want to do, I want to take a real close look at the job site in case when that wire pulled down, maybe it tore bushing out of the transformer or something. So if if there is some other damage or material required, I want to let the crew know ASAP so they can get that loaded up. So this is the next span down, primary down, neutral down. So we'll get turned around and set up to open that switch. Actually, I'm not going to have to even set up. I'll be able to open that switch right from the ground. A lot of times, if there's a fault on the line, you, you want to make sure that you have your load buster when opening a switch because you don't know how much load is on that line. You don't know how much current's on that line. In this case here, the switch is literally two poles away and, and the wire is very clearly not in contact with, with anything. So there's not going to be any load whatsoever. So just take a closer look at that primary there. That's why it's important to do a real good primary tie. That Whoever tied that primary up there, it's, it's that tie wire alone that's holding that wire from coming down to the ground. And the switch is just a couple of holes up ahead. Even if there was load on that, it is low brake. It has low brake capability. So that big white plastic chute in the top shows that it is a load brake cutout. So we'll get that opened up and remove the door permit made up as well. So before we call our dispatch, we want to get all of our information written down. Pole 14 R3, pole 14 R5. 
SO37 and I'm almost positive that this is a radial feed meaning there's no alternate feed we're gonna make sure looking at our map I might as well show you guys that uh, let's zoom out here until we can't read the street names so again I've mentioned this a million times the blue lines are a three phase red lines are a single phase that's where we're at our GPS marker so that single phase line comes in and there's no alternate feeds. The three feed is not far from us. An alternate feed would be something like, uh, let's zoom back out here. So like this, this blue line heading into the city here, the switch to open it's right around here. If I open that switch, this line can be fed from the city direction as well. So we would have to verify the switch open on either end. That's not the case here. Aaron here. I'm just on that call and I've got a switch. Actually, the switch isn't open. The primary's down two span away. Um, 8014 SO37 and the primary's down at full 14R3 to 14R5. Uh, there's still a live primary, but it's up in the air on the pin there. So I'd like to open that 8014 SO37. It's done for there and uh down primary there, 8014, 14R3, and 14R5 there. Go ahead and open uh, 8014, uh, S037 there, and two uh, radial pyramid up there. Yep, John Four. So you said I can go ahead and open that 8014, SO37, and report, and I'll get a radial permit back uh, when I report back there. Down Four, uh, Four, one eight two clear. All right, so we'll get that open and we might as well remove the door while we have the stick out. Um, no point in coming back. We know we're going to need to go hands on the line. So we'll get that opened up. That wind was intense. Sometimes you can use, when the wind's blowing at that, you could see it really, really fighting the stick. Sometimes you can get the stick going up and use the pole or the wire as leverage and drop it in. The butt of this pole is just surrounded in trees, so I opted to let it allow it to dip in instead. I did want to show you guys this though. These old cutout doors, fiberglass. It's it's not a smooth fiberglass. I don't even know what you'd call that. If anyone knows, mention in the comments. But you can see it's literally loose fibers you grab a hold of that with your bare hand and it doesn't feel too good so make sure you got your gloves on when you're handling those old cut out doors burn to say open to 8014 s037 there Tip four. so uh radio permit 136458 uh 136458 uh primary down there 8014 14r3 My radio permit number is 136458, and that's for a primary down at 8014R3 to 14R5. And I agree with the protection points, uh, 8014SO37 to the end of the line. 10-4 there, Aaron, so when you're ready, uh, you can go ahead and check open 8014SO37. So, radio work permit tag 136458. Go ahead and uh, check potential. If none, protect yourself next to your grounds upon us. All times go to work. Work is complete. Personal clear, short domain clear. Temporary grounds of bonds have been removed there. You can close 8014S037. Remove your tag uh, 136458 there and report. Uh, when ready, I can go ahead and check open 8014S037. Install radio permit tag 136458. I can then go ahead and check for potential if not installed necessary grounds bonds. Go to work when all work is complete. When our clearance structure main clear and temporary grounds bonds have been removed, I can go ahead and close 8014 SO37, remove tag 136458, and report. All right, so our work permit is in effect. Lots of questions in the comments over the past about why we need a permit to do this work. It's not a permit in the sense of getting a permit to build a deck on your house. It, it's a 
work permit so that in our system, our live system that monitors power lines for the whole province, in that system, that line is tagged and identified that there's a crew working on it. I'm also going to have this tag on the pole, which is going to be filled out on the back with the crew that's holding the permit that's on site. Um, if this happened to be a rural line, 100 poles, crew comes by to storm, they call dispatch, they say, yeah, we see a cutout open here, we think we can get the line back in. They're going to see this tag and know that somebody's already on it. Now, let's say the tag blows off in the wind because someone didn't secure it properly. You, if you close a switch in our province without permission, that's grounds for immediate dismissal. It's taken very seriously. So they're going to call our dispatch, ask for permission to close that switch. When dispatch punches in that switch number in their system, it's going to refer to this tag right away. They're going to say, Aaron's on site working on that line. Nobody can operate that switch in any way or even work on that pole without contacting me first, letting me know what's going on. Even if there's a crew further back using my switch as a protection point, that stuff can't go on without the permit holder, which is myself today, knowing about it. So it's, it's a way to identify and to have control over the, the primary lines in our system. Okay, so now that I've got my computer rebooted, I see that there is also another truck call that came in. Tree on line, pole to house. The branch has fallen on primary line in front of house. Not showing any outages. Hard to say if that's actually primary line or not. So what we're going to do, we're going to gear it up, we're going to check the potential, we're going to get a ground installed on this side. We don't have to put the ground right at the pole. A little bit of stuff up in the air to maneuver around with the boom, so we're going to come right back here, get a ground up on that primary neutral, and then we're going to go on the other job site, on the other side of the job site, two poles up to put the other ground. I can't, I can't put it where that primary is holding on by a thread because there's no neutral there to ground it to. But basically, a few people have asked in the past why I'm on this end of things when the feed is from that way, putting the ground on. Reason is, I get the ground on the source side where we open that cutout in case, say, one of the overhead conductors breaks, comes down on, on the line we'll work on and energizes it. This ground will ensure that that trips as fast as possible. However, since that primary line's broken, if there's any back feed in this line, that's not going to help us. And especially when the guy gets up there splicing it, you get two ends of the wires. You got one side that's grounded, the other side that's not. If there's any induction in that line, any back feed, anything at all, and you have a grounded primary on the other, your body becomes the path to train out that induction or back feed or, or whatever. Very, very dangerous. So you want to make sure both ends are grounded. And I'll cover this a little better in another video. The, the difference between a ground and a bond. The ground is typically to trip the line out, bleed off any induction or capacitive coupling or back feed or whatever. The bond is to make sure there's no difference in potential between what you're working on. So if we're going to spur up that pole, we're going to climb up that pole with our hooks on, you're on the pole, your feet are on that pole, that neutral is on a plastic spreader block, so the neutral doesn't have a direct doesn't have a direct connection to the pole. The primary certainly doesn't because it's on an insulator. So even though that primary is grounded to the neutral, you're standing on the pole that could be of a different potential. So you can put a cluster bracket around the pole, run a bond from the pole over to the neutral, and then that way the pole, the neutral, and the primary are all connected with a low resistance path and that'll make your work zone, where everything in your work zone is of equal potential. So in the event that that line does temporarily become energized, even though it should trip very fast, that split second before it does trip can be very dangerous. And with your work zone being of all equal potential, still wouldn't want to ever be in that scenario, but it's certainly going to make things a heck of a lot safer.
right, so we've got both ends of our work zone grounded. But basically what we're gonna try and do is I'm gonna leave my truck set up here at the ground. The big truck can go right at the center where the brake is and also where it's untied. We're gonna simply pull out that wire out onto the street, bring that up the big truck, throw a sleeve in it, tie it back in. We'll be in and out of here pretty, pretty quick. But what I wanted to mention, you're new into the trade, you've been on the truck for six months, whatever, first block apprentice, your lead hand is in the truck getting the permit ready or get material, and you want to be proactive, you want to do something, you want to help out, don't go and start working on that stuff, don't start coiling that wire or grabbing a hold of that, start to drag it out into the road until you have your tailboard and it's being deemed safe by the permit holder, whoever's in charge to do so. So we're going to write up a tailboard. Um, a few important things to cover in the tailboard. Probably the most important is your 911 address. I always keep the tailboard on the dash of my truck and inform the crew. So if there is an emergency, they're calling 911 in a panic. All they got to do is jump in my cab. Tailboard's right there with the 911 address at the top. We are also going to note the nearest disconnect back. If something were to happen where my permit meets the energized line, if we get to dump that line going back, there's a three phase switch on the two more poles up the road. So we'll note that as well as the, the work methods we're gonna to use to make these repairs, all the PPE, crews on site, pretty much cover any hazards we've identified and what we're gonna to do to control those hazards. All right, so we've pretty well got the wire all up near ready to go. That neutral always gonna just tighten up the come alongs. And I'll bring that right up in this place. You gotta watch when you're doing these calls that it's on the right side of the telephone, for example. Here it's hard to tell from far away which side the wire the telephone's on, but he gets that all up to sag over there, and next thing you know, it's jammed in wrapped around that telephone. So you want to do that first thing before you get the wire on the come alongs, and you gotta watch you pull up that primary that doesn't get caught underneath one of the hooks of that cutout or something, so everything's all up in place good there. We've got five or six calls on the system here now turned out to be quite a windy day. So, started at 6.30 this morning, 14 hours Yeah, you're good. Beauty. Uh, I got two more calls on the system. It's quarter to five p.m. right now. We're we're strictly on 14-hour shifts max right now for eight hours rest. We started at 6:30 this morning, uh, so I can go till 8:30 p.m. Two more calls. We're gonna be we're gonna be cutting it close. Probably won't even bother stopping for for supper. Just eat when I get home there at 8.30 or whatever. So the next two calls, I'm just switching over to my on-call deployment plan here now. The other boys just took off. One was a three customer outage and the other was a tree, that one that's a tree on the primary. I suspect that the open wire, secondary, too hot, slot together. See right here, there's a spacer, keep that from happening. Great, you probably can't hardly see it through the tree, right there. Then as we go along the rest of the wire, there's no spacers. Good chance that's slapped together in the wind. You can see some bird marks right up there actually. This guy here, that bird's probably not so bad if we're right through the bark. You can see the neutral at the top. That's that. Those five secondary wires are right in that branch. It's, it's not going to track through the wood like primary wood, but it's pushing on it enough that it's actually pulling the, the insulators right out of the pole. So, maybe I'll give the boys a shout. While they're on their way, I might shoot across town and check out that other call. 
All right, guys, so we just rolled into the last trouble call. This is the one that said tree on the primary branch fell on primary line in front of house, in front of the house now, and there's no power lines. They're all back lot, so we'll jump out of the track and see what's going on there. But something I wanted to mention, and I was actually pretty excited to, to hear this, so I called the guys on call to come give me a hand for that other job where we're gonna get rid of some of those trees tangled up in that open wire secondary. And one of the guys that's coming to help, uh, Dan, see if he wants to show his face on camera or not. We'll see what he says, but he's retiring, like next week. This, this is his last on-call roster ever with us. Um, pretty sure he's got like a 35-year career under his belt. The entire career of which he worked as an alignment. He's been a troubling, troubleman like myself for, I'm going to guess, the last 15 years, maybe, maybe more. So we're losing a lot of experience there and a great guy. I can't say enough great things about Dan. He's one of those guys that's always in a good mood, um, always, always smiling. He, he's led a very healthy career. He's in, he's in great, great shape. Um, he works very smoothly. Doesn't. He's not a cowboy up the lines. Not, not going to get anyone hurt. Uh, I learned a lot from Dan over the years. And uh, if Dan ends up watching this video, I want to say thank you for. Uh, it's been an honor to be to work alongside you all these years. We wish you the best of luck in your retirement. But let's jump out back. We'll see what's up. And when Dan shows up here, we'll uh, we'll see if he wants to show his face on camera there. There's our branch. <laughs> Gotta love rolling up to one of these ones. That branch could sit there for a hundred years and not hurt anything. But we'll get our hot stick and knock it off. Gotta love taking the good with the bad. Alright, Dan's just pulling up on me right now. Alright, so we've got Dan here, guys. So this is Dan, he's been with us for how many years? 32 and a half. 32 and a half years. Yep. And this guy could still run circles around most college football students. This guy <laughs> kept in good shape over the years. So you're retiring in two weeks? Yep, first of April. First of April, and it's not a, it's not a prank. It's not a prank. Huh? He's he's done. So it's been an honor to work with you, Dan, after all these years. And if everyone can go in the comments and wish him a happy retirement. A lot of guys in this channel that watch us are retired. So any advice they have for Dan for his retirement, put it down in the comments. I want to see at least what a thousand <laughs> happy retirements in the comments. And I'm sure uh, Dan will be reading each and every one of those. So appreciate the service after all these years, Dan. That's great, Aaron, and keep those videos coming. I watched <laughs> the last one today. I, I, I watched one today. Oh, nice. Yep. Right on. All right, on to the next job. All right. <laughs> so after some further discussion, there there was a miscalculation. It's actually 42 years with us. Yeah, that's right. 42 years. Unbelievable. I hope I'm in that good of shape, 42 years. <laughs> all right, so we had to upgrade to the winter coat. As you can see, it's getting pretty chilly out here now. Uh, so, I've got two guys with me. They each got their own track. One of them is going to set up in the middle, put one of those plastic spreaders up on the open wire secondary so it doesn't slap again. We've seen some burn marks on the wire. Pretty sure that's what actually caused the transformer to open. But these branches pushing directly against it are, are definitely not acceptable either. So, the uh, big truck right there is going to look after that, cut a few branches there. The other smaller one that's going to be on the end, he's going to go up into that, I don't know what kind of tree it is, spruce tree or something over there. Can't even see the wire in that one. And I'll take care of this guy right here with my truck. So we can see where that tree's pushing right on that open wire secondary, and it's just tickling that primary up there. Same with these guys. So we're going to be 
cutting that all out of there using a certified hot stick tested for KVA foot. Once we get that down out of the primary, we're in our 20 KVs, we might be able to use the Milwaukee sawzall or hacksaw, I guess they call it, clear the rest of that up. And we, of course, our other guys I'm going to go work on a couple other structures there as well. And you see that's the one that was rubbing against the wire. It was in there real bad. So we've got that all cut out of the primary there now. I'll use my hacksaw to get off these last few limbs down low here. So not perfect, but a heck of a lot better. So we'll get that cut out roof fuse there now. Let's see where the fuse link's hanging. The rest of the boys are out of the air. We're losing, losing our daylight. That or I still have my tin glasses on. Make sure we get all these hangers out of the tree so they don't fall on anyone's head. And that's pretty much it. We're going to refuse and close that in. Well, guys, she was a long day. 14 hours, pretty pretty typical I guess actually, nothing too crazy happened today, um, but it's busy, a lot of driving, we've got an app on our phones now that document literally every single move we make, and uh, they'll tell me exactly how many kilometers this truck moved today, but all I gotta do now, call dispatch, let them know that transformer is closed in, and fill in my timesheet. Just log in on my phone. So 284 kilometers. It's not too bad. I actually thought it was more than that. So we're gonna log off of the app on the phone. Fill in my timesheet. Log off of that. Um, appreciate you guys watching the video, coming along for the ride. Anyone that wants to wish Dan. Uh, happy retirement or congratulate him on his retirement after an extremely long career 42 years wow and this guy is still in crazy physical shape good health I'm really really happy for him great guy and wish him the best so anyone wants to uh, pass on their wishes down in the comments I'm sure he'll be checking out the video and reading those so appreciate appreciate you guys stopping in as always I'll try to get this video up in the next week or two and See you all soon.